Dear friends, today we have a special episode of Super Tony's Adventures. Enjoy! Guess who I'm talking about? He's a maniac with sharp razors on his fingers and a burned face. He can get into teenagers' dreams and kill them there. Here's a clue. Today you are gonna face him. Good work, Tony! We are, of course, talking about the famous and terrible Freddy Krueger. First, let's find out where does this weirdo come from? No, not Tony. We already know enough about your eccentric nature anyway. Let's better talk about a little boy called Frederick. His mother went crazy after giving birth to him. Then, young Freddy was put in a foster family and he was beaten by his alcoholic foster father. Not surprisingly, at the age of 18, Freddy killed his foster father with a razor. He got away with the murder because there wasn't enough evidence to blame him. Then he got married and even had a daughter. But soon, Freddy Krueger started to kidnap and kill children. All his victims lived on Elm Street. The angry parents of the dead children took matters into their own hands. They found Freddy in a boiler room where he worked as a gatekeeper and burned him alive. But then something mystical happened. Before dying, Kruger was visited by some dream demons who offered him a deal. In exchange for his soul, he got a new life. For 10 years, no one heard about the serial killer, but then he came back and started haunting the dreams of different teenagers and killing them. This is what we see in the 1984 film A Nightmare on Elm Street, the first movie about Freddy. There have been seven films about this maniac with a bladed leather glove, and they all have become classics, just as the character itself. Well, there has been actually eight films, but the last one was a 2010 remake of the original, and it was a very, very, very bad movie. Freddy Krueger was killed several times during the films, but he always finds a way to return and keep killing people. In the film Freddy vs. Jason, the maniac with the hockey mask kills Krueger and is seen coming out of a lake with his severed head. But then we see the head winking at the camera, leaving us perplexed. So what does this mean? Is Freddy Krueger invincible? Well, it is possible to defeat Krueger, but only inside a dream. You have to understand that you are in a dream and start controlling the world inside it. Inside your dreams, you are incredibly powerful and will have no problem defeating Freddy. So now, Tony, we're going to teach you to control your dreams. So let's begin by placing a notebook next to your bed. Every day, after waking up, you have to write your dreams for a couple of minutes. By doing this, your subconscious will learn to distinguish dreams from reality. The next step is to stop eating after 6 p.m. On top of that, you must not watch TV two hours before going to bed. If you have nothing to do, read a book. And finally, you're in bed. You should choose an unusual position. This will create new sensations while sleeping, and it will be easier for your brain to focus. Now, without any rush, think of everything that happened today backwards. And now, it's time to sleep. So, take a minute to relive everything that you did during the day, but backwards. In the end, put all your experiences from the day in an imaginary balloon and send it to the sky. And now, sleep. Welcome to the dream world, Tony. It's time to turn on your conscious. Look at your hands and your feet. It'll help you materialize your own self inside the dream, and you'll stop being a puppet inside your dreams. Now you can decide where to go and what to do. For example, try to imagine a mountain of ice cream in front of you. Voila! Did you get it? You just have to imagine things and they will appear. Just like that. In the dream world, your actions are limited only by your imagination. Dear viewers, you should also try to have lucid dreams. You would be able to live different situations, prepare for future events, go back in the past, visit any place in the world, or be successful in all the things you can imagine. Practice this technique every day and not even Freddy Krueger will be able to hunt you in your dreams. You can also watch our video about Jason Voorhees and other monsters and maniacs that Tony has fought. The links are in the description. Folks, get ready to be scared and prepare to panic, because we're once again in the Trevor Henderson universe. Today, we're going to meet the famous Long Horse, and we're going to tell you everything we know about it. Let's go! As you can see, Long Horse is a creature with a horse skull and no jaw. Its head is connected to an endlessly long neck. It has a few strands of black hair on its neck and head. By the way, the horse's neck makes a distinctive cracking noise when it bends, 
and no one has ever seen the horse's body itself, so there could be two possibilities. Either there is a body, but it is located someplace far away from the head, or there is no body at all, and the creature is more like an endless snake with a horse's head. Now let's talk about its origins. On August 24, 2018, Trevor Henderson posted the very first photo of Longhorse. Later, he posted another photo, somewhere in the suburbs. It was under this photo that Trevor wrote the caption, Longhorse, thereby giving the creature its name. An ancient cave painting of a long horse and three men has also been found, suggesting that it has been around since ancient times. Interestingly, despite its intimidating appearance, it is completely harmless to humans. The long horse can predict disasters and teleport. It uses its abilities to warn people of disasters. It is able to break the law of physics, can defy gravity, and apparently levitate. It can twist its body and change the number of joints in its neck. Thanks to its properties, its neck doesn't have to connect in linear space. Trevor Henderson himself said that Longhorse is very curious by nature. It is friendly, smells like cinnamon, and its skin resembles wax. In addition, it loves attention and all sorts of treats, like apples. By the way, on top of all that, it is the ability to penetrate people's dreams, but only to warn them of an impending disaster. But beware friends, rumor has it that in addition to the good long horse, there is also an evil version. You should never mix them up under any circumstances. The evil long horse is red, has eyes and a lower jaw. It is able to appear and disappear quickly and also traps and attacks its victims. By the way, we also have a playlist of episodes in which Tony meets all kinds of monsters and characters. We have already fought against Slenderman, Jason Voorhees, Siren Head, and many others. Tony, in order to please our viewers, today we're going back to the SCP Foundation. We're gonna talk about a mysterious creature, a plague doctor, known as Object SCP-049. Let's start. So, SCP-049 is a humanoid entity, roughly 1.9 meters in height, which bears the appearance of a medieval plague doctor you might think that it is wearing thick robes and a ceramic mask, but research has shown that the garments have grown out of SCP-049's body. Although, x-rays indicate that the SCP-049 does have a humanoid skeletal structure. The Plague Doctor is fixed on treating people who have been infected with the pestilence, but his methods are quite controversial. SCP-049 finds people that are infected and performs operations which result in the patients becoming zombies or reanimated corpses. They are known as SCP-0492. They don't seem to retain any of their prior memories or mental functions, having only basic motor skills and response mechanisms. These creatures don't move much, but can become aggressive. SCP-0492 are more like zombies than people, but nevertheless, the Plague Doctor believes they have been cured. SCP-049 was discovered during the investigation of a series of unknown disappearances in southern France. During a raid in a local home, investigators found several instances of SCP-0492, as well as their creator. Right now, the Plague Doctor is contained within a standard secure humanoid containment cell. SCP-049 must be sedated before any attempts to transport it. During transport, SCP-049 must be secured with a restriction harness, including a locking collar and extension restraint, and monitored by no fewer than two armed guards. SCP-049 is generally cooperative with most Foundation personnel. Nevertheless, sudden changes in behavior are to be met with elevated force. Under no circumstances should any personnel come into direct contact with SCP-049 during these outbursts. In the event SCP-049 becomes aggressive, the application of lavender has been shown to produce a calming effect on the entity. Once calmed, SCP-049 generally becomes compliant and will return to containment with little resistance. The Foundation has decided to forbid the Plague Doctor from performing experiments on humans. Nevertheless, in order to facilitate the ongoing containment of SCP-049, the entity is to be provided with the corpse of a recently deceased animal once every two weeks. Corpses that become instances of SCP-0492 are to be removed from SCP-049's containment cell and incinerated. 
While in containment at Site-19, SCP-049 has spent a considerable amount of time studying and performing surgery on the various mammalian corpses it has been provided. SCP-049 will routinely spend several days performing surgery, and then spending several more days documenting its findings in a thick leather journal stored within its doctor's bag. SCP-049 will often seek to share its findings with members of Foundation staff, believing he and the Foundation follow the same objective, getting rid of the pestilence. SCP-049 is capable of speech in a variety of languages, though tends to prefer English or Medieval French. While SCP-049 is generally cordial and cooperative with Foundation staff, it can become especially irritated or at times outright aggressive if it feels that it is in the presence of what it calls the pestilence. Although the exact nature of this pestilence is currently unknown to Foundation researchers, it does seem to be an issue of immense concern to SCP-049. If left unchecked, SCP-049 will generally attempt to kill any infected individuals. The Plague Doctor is capable of causing all biological functions of an organism to seize through direct skin contact. How this occurs is currently unknown. Nevertheless, SCP-049 has expressed frustration or remorse after these killings, indicating that they have done little to kill the pestilence, though will usually seek to then perform a crude surgery on the corpse using the implements contained within a black doctor's bag it carries on its person at all times. While these surgeries are not always successful, they often result in the creation of instances of SCP-0492. So friends, Tell us in the comments what you think of SCP-049. Is this a crazy creature that turns people into zombies, or a good doctor that is curing the world? Also, tell us which objects of the Foundation would you like to see in our videos. Bye bye!